Hello there, it's Sandy Alnock. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today I will be doing some stamping. These are new images from Colorado Craft Company for their new release. And I decided to go tropical and I made some Tiffany stained glass kind of images. There's three different techniques here and you can do these in all different mediums. I'm gonna be talking about the design techniques here that I employed and we will get going on that. But first I wanted to let you know about something island related as well. Since I had something tropical in today's video, a fundraiser that is currently going on for Hawaii. It's a color wheel image you can download in color and all the proceeds of your $5 purchase go to help people in disastrous situations. Tiffany glass is a kind of, I guess, stained glass. It's made with a different kind of glass, has a little opalescence to it. But what I decided was to call it Tiffany glass because I think it's a pretty name. And this first technique is pre-drawing the lines that you're going to use for your design. So I made a grid and then I started making lines on that, connecting different corners so that I could create a pattern. And then I did my stamping over it because I'm gonna be working in gouache paints on this vintage watercolor paper. Now this is terrible for watercolor, but when I saw it on Amazon, I was like, I gotta try this. I gotta see what this is like. And it stinks for watercolor, but it's beautiful for gouache because the color can sit up on the surface quite nicely. So I'm painting it with the gouache. It's an opaque watercolor. And in my previous uh, Colorado Craft Company video, I actually did some gouache as well. So I'll link you to that in the doobly-doo down below if you want to go see that one as well. But this one, I am just painting the colors so that they get lighter and lighter toward the top. Now the lines are disappearing from the stamp. So I'm guessing at roughly where things are, not really too worried about it, but I'm just going to paint one petal at a time so I see its detail as I go. But you can keep re-stamping so if you got this far and you got confused as to where things are, you could just stamp it again. I just kept going because I knew I was going to do one big stamping at the end instead of, you know, stamping multiple times. And you can see in the previous video why sometimes I had stamped in between and sometimes I don't. So here's the re-stamping of the ink. This is VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And all the lines came right back. So you can go in and paint more details on top of that. I'll add a little bit more of a goldy yellow in there later. But for now, I'm just gonna get busy painting the background. I used the colors that were in the flower around the border. And then inside, I used a complementary color for all of the background shapes. And so each one of those is in various kinds of yellows mixed with various, various amounts of white. And then I used a pen to go in and make all the lines, just outlined everything. Now I had tried this by doing the outlines first and that was a bad move, so don't do that. Do the lines afterward. Now technique number two is to draw lines for yourself and then ignore them, which is what I did here because I didn't like what I drew. I wanted to have like another plant kind of winding up behind this bird of paradise and I wanted to kind of have it be all flowy, but the lines that I had drawn, I wasn't really thrilled with. So I began by using a lot of warm colors first in the flower, just, you know, kind of mushing around some reds and yellows and stuff in that one petal, making it with a little bit of purples in it. And then I just ignored all the lines that were behind there because I'm working in gouache so I can paint right over them and they'll just disappear. If you're working in another medium, you can easily do the same thing. You can do it with your Copic markers, you can do it with colored pencils, whatever kind of markers you're using. Just make clear shapes that you're gonna be able to outline. So I'm filling in all the in-between shapes with a dark color in between all these. That dark color is what's gonna to help to make everything pop. And what I'm using here for the background is all cool colors, blues and greens. And then you see I'm using warm colors around the outside edge. And that also ties back into the flower. So I'm doing kind of the same thing color-wise as I did on the last one, just using 
the same color for the flower as the border and then something contrasting so that the, the flower is the thing that really pops to the front. You can decide exactly how many lines you want in everything. So I started by outlining mine and then went into some more detail in the border, made some more you know, horizontal and vertical lines and added more lines into each of those stems as well. Because that started pushing all that to the background and just the flower just kept coming forward as there were more and more lines in the background. So the third technique is just to skip the drawing of the graphics entirely. Because once I did the second one, I was like, okay, fine. I'm just going to do it on the fly and see what happens and see how hard or easy this is. This is a columbine and columbines can have purple flowers or bluish flowers or pinkish flowers, any kind of flower. So I made these pink just so I'd have something different than the other two. And using a nice big fat brush, I can go right over top of all those lines, not worry about being fussy. I don't even have to worry about going outside the lines because I can fix those with a pen later. And that center portion is going to have some yellow in it, but I'm just going to leave the red for now. And after the stamping is done, I can add some yellow centers on all those little, little bits and pieces in the center of the flower at the very end. But I'm going to dry it really good because I think I forgot to mention that. Dry it before you do the stamping or else your stamp will get stuck in the wet paint. Stamp it and you're ready to go with the background. What I decided I wanted was kind of, blue greens, greens, those kinds of colors in the background and I wanted them pale. So I mixed them with white. So they're very uh, pastel kinds of colors. Once I got the blue greens done, I added some more green to my puddle of paint and started painting green leaves. And then I added yellow to that so I could get another color. And then I added some dark green to that. Just kept going until I filled in the whole area with nice big, big, big shapes. And then the outside edge, instead of doing a fussy border, the fussiness comes from the pen and ink work and the color was just a solid reddish color. The shapes then, I outlined all the leaves and then drew lines in them to just divide it into these little glass panels. And this one was far easier than the other two. <laughs> oh my goodness. Especially that first one. The first one about like blew my mind. But I think they're all pretty anyway, and they're going to be gorgeous in floaty glass frames, I think, because I love the soft torn edge of the paper. There's just a lot I love about these. So check out the rest of the blog hop. There's lots going on. Links in the doobly-doo to mine. And don't forget, if you want to get the fundraiser image, you can pop over there and get that on my site right now before you forget and I will see you guys again in my next video. I put videos out usually on Tuesdays and Saturdays. See you then.